We are about to explore the iron production process as used at the Glenbrook Steel Mill. Covering 190 hectares, the Glenbrook Steel Mill employs 1,200 full-time staff, plus many contractors, and produces 600,000 tonnes of steel each year. The production of iron is one of the main steps in the path to making steel. The iron process starts with iron sand, titaniferromagnetite, being brought in from the Waikato North Head Mine, located 18 kilometres southwest of the steel mill. Using magnets, the iron sand is purified, with the output being referred to as primary concentrate. This is carried in an underground pipeline in a mixture commonly called slurry, consisting of 50% water and 50% primary concentrate by weight. Once at the mill, it is dewatered and then put into stockpiles for later use. A system of conveyor belts pick up the primary concentrate and carry it to the multi-hearth furnaces, where it is mixed with coal and a small amount of limestone to regulate acidity throughout the process. The steel mill has four multi-hearth furnaces, or MHFs, which are divided into 12 hearths, or layers, covering a total of 412 square metres per furnace, where the mixture is superheated to around 1000 degrees Celsius, burning off the impurities in gaseous form. These gases are directed to the afterburners, where they are reburnt to convert the carbon monoxide into the cleaner carbon dioxide. Once burnt, they can be used to generate up to 60% of the site's power in the cogeneration plant. The output from the multi half furnace is transferred to one of four rotary kilns. They are 65 metres long and 4.6 metres in diameter. The inside of the kiln is layered with alumina bricks to a depth of 230 millimetres in order to withstand the intense heat. The kiln is set at a 1.5 degree decline and rotates once every two minutes to keep the primary concentrate moving. The purpose of the kiln is to perform the reduction process of iron oxides to iron, now referred to as reduced primary concentrate and char, or RPCC. Excess oxygen is blown at at 9 points along the length to once again convert the carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. The materials spend approximately 12 hours in the kiln, going from one end to the other, and are discharged across a set of bars 100mm apart, which prevent large clumps entering the melters. There are two melters, each 26 metres long and 7.6 metres wide. They are designed to produce liquid iron from the RPCC. When entering the melter, it is approximately 900 degrees Celsius and 80% metallized. The melting occurs in the furnace body, and the power is supplied by three pairs of electrodes, drawing a total of 40 megawatts, bringing the heat up to 1500 degrees Celsius, the melting point of iron. This process removes any remaining impurities, raising them to the surface in the form of slag, which is removed, or tapped, from the top of the liquid iron. The addition of extra RPCC to the melter controls the metallization of the iron at around 95%, and this liquid iron is tapped regularly into large containers called iron ladles. A pneumatic drill is used to make a hole through the melter sidewall to allow the liquid iron to flow out. The ladles are carried out of the iron processing plant by huge vehicles to be used in the rest of the steel making process.